Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to Thursday Theorist. Before we get started with the second to the last of the novel episodes, I want to give a big shout out to my buddy Richard Gerlock. Um, I did an unboxing and it isn't nasty, but I know a lot of people don't watch the isn't nasty, so I wanted to give him a major shout out in a Stephen King video uh, because he sent me this. This is the Chinese edition of It, and if you, if you notice, it's kind of strange, but the title in Chinese looks like a big E. Like a big E. Anyways, so, and I like how he's got, they got Georgie on the cover, and I, I guess that's just about all they have as far as imagery. Um, but it is a two-book set. It's got a smaller book and a bigger book. Um, and I talked to Richard about it since it seems like it's much shorter an experience, and he says that Chinese, in China, uh, the Chinese language uses characters that will have like whole sentences in it. So, I mean, that explains it, I guess. But thank you again, Richard. I appreciate it, and this is awesome. This is the only other international edition, uh, translated version of Stephen King's books that I have, other than uh, in Somnos up here, which is the Swedish version of Insomnia that my friend Thomas Stromquist um, in Sweden uh, sent me. So here we are for the topic of the day, Sleeping Beauties by Stephen and Owen King. I was going to jump right over this and leave this for the collabs um, for like when I do Gwendy's that he wrote with uh, Chismar and when I get to the Straub collaborations, but I decided there really was no reason to. Um, I just want to go ahead and get this one out of the way. Uh, the Outsider is next week and it is the last of the novel ones for the Dark Tower Thursday Theorist stuff. Um, so Sleeping Beauties, right off the bat, the more I think about this book, um, the more I dislike it. So. Um, if you want to know my full thoughts on this, I actually have a review of this one up already. Go check that out. Um, but into the book itself, as far as Dark Tower, King Verse, tie-ins, there's really nothing that's obviously stated. I've only been through this one once. I will eventually listen to the audiobook. I'm not looking forward to it. But I will eventually listen to the audiobook and give it another go and try to see a little bit deeper into it. But um, the only tie-in that I have is some of the more spoilers ahead, by the way, some of the more outlandish stuff like the tree, um, the talking animals, the uh, just Evie alone. Now Eve, I don't, th I don't, she might not even be called Evie in the book. I just remember for some reason calling her Evie. But Eve in the book, actually it might be Evie Black. No, it's just Eve. Okay, so Eve Black. Um, you have little things that kind of pique my interest, like her name, last name being Black. You have the man in black, which is, you know, Randall Flagg. She doesn't have fingerprints, like our buddy Randall. Um, she can talk to animals, like our buddy Randall. She's around for the end of the world, like our buddy Randall. Um, there's just so much about her, and also she's got to be a twinner or something for Andre Linoge from Storm of the Century. It's the this book. One of the major problems I have with this book is it is so much like Under the Dome and everything else that King has created. Dean Koontz has a problem with this. Stephen King usually doesn't, and the way King gets gets away with it is by tying his worlds together. So if you see something pop up, you have possibly an explanation for it. Whereas Koontz, you don't. Um, now, the I also want to go as far, I saw some similarities. I have read The Wastelands, um, which is the third Dark Tower book. I've read that one just almost as much as I've read Stephen King's It. Um, uh, actually, about half as many times. But it's the second most read book in his catalog from me. Um, and there are some similarities between the place where the women go when they go to sleep. There are some similarities between that and the town of Ludd in the Wastelands. So if anybody else caught that vibe from that place that they go to, let me know down there in the comments below. I think that's it. I'm going to wrap this up on that note. So I don't have any hard connections, but I do have theories. So maybe Evie, Eve Black is a twinner for Andre Linoge. Maybe she is Randall Flagg, and that's why she has so many of the same traits. Another thing is, you got Owen King here, so I, and I believe, I firmly believe, that he wrote the majority of this book. 
And if you do that, you're going to see even less of Stephen King in it. Basically, you're going to see less of the King verse. Um, so those are more sprinkled clues that tell me that Stephen King didn't really have much of a hand in this book. So um, if you found anything else, if there's anything I missed, anything you want to bring up, let me know down there in the comments below. And before we log off, the Dark Tower reread is going to be happening starting the first book, The Gunslinger. We are going to be starting that the first week of August. I will be putting up a video saying a welcome, you know, whoever wants to read with us is welcome to read with us. I need all of your comments on that video, and then I will make a Goodreads group or Twitter group. I'll make a YouTube group. I don't even know if I can do that. But we'll find some way to communicate as we're reading through. You don't have to be a super quick reader. Um, we're going to take our time with it and go through the entire series. Um, there's also, I want to ask you guys, do you want to do the Little Sisters of Alluria first? Because that is technically the first of the Dark Tower stories. If so, let me know down there. But until next time, I have been E, you have been you. This has been another Thursday Theorist Review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye!